Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Tea's Time. I'm TJ. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, today, we're going to do our uh, battery isolator uh, upgrade. If you caught the video, I believe it was like two videos ago where I had like the no heat issue and I tried to get the battery, no heat issue due to low voltage, tried to get everything uh, charged up. Uh, my battery isolator that I had, this one right here, the lithium uh, 225, uh, it wasn't working and I waited till I actually needed it to uh, try to figure out what was wrong with it. Uh, so I got that removed and I had to do a little brainstorming of uh, what I'm going to do to put something in that could just uh, withstand uh, the 10 lithium batteries that I have. Uh, so for that, I have this uh, Victron. It's a DC to DC charger. It's a 12 volt to 12 volt. It'll charge at uh, 30 amps. And that's just going to what I'm going to use to charge the batteries like when the, the vehicle is running. And then to jump start, like if I ever do need to jump start to connect the, the coach and the, the start batteries together, I'm using this uh, isolator relay. So I'll be able to connect the two batteries together. Uh, so this versus all of this, this right here uh, is programmed to uh, charge your batteries. It connects for like 15 minutes and then it disconnects for 30 minutes to let the alternator cool down. Uh, but just because I have like the 10 lithium batteries, I just think it was just sending too much current through them because the lithium batteries are very low resistance when they're charging. Uh, so like that guy heated up and uh, this is the stuff that was inside of it. There's a plastic piece that held that in and actually take this off. Uh, that little copper washer was sit on there. And then on here, there's like a little square plastic piece that connected that and it will just rotate whenever it got actuated with this. Uh, so uh, that little square plastic piece got hot, it melted, it broke. Uh, so it just wasn't connecting. Like it still functions, like you still hear it clicks, like it's trying to do its, uh, its action that it's supposed to do. But it just isn't making contact and it's broke. Uh, so uh, the only downside with that is like it's it's cool that like it connects and disconnects unless your alternator is Let's your alternator cool down, but it's not like a regulated charge. It's just like whatever, like the alternator is throwing. That's what it's putting into uh, the battery. Uh, so the positive with the Victron here is going to be a regulated voltage. Like it's going to actually have like a charge algorithm for the lithium batteries. And it's not just taking like 14 volts and just, it's just sending a straight shot. It actually uh, breaks that down. It's going to put 30 amps into the batteries. It's not going to be like the fastest charge, but you can add more uh dc to dc chargers if you want like more than like the 30 amps like you want to get up to like 90 you can use uh three in a, a parallel uh circuit and you can have those all run and charge your batteries but uh the good thing with that is like even though like it'll stay connected it'll detect when the motor or you can set it up to detect when like the motor is actually running so it only comes on when it detects like certain voltage at the alternator and then uh also all the the coach batteries, it like it sees like the charge or the voltage at the the coach batteries, and it uh configures this charge algorithms uh for uh, the lithium batteries. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, for uh, the price, the price difference isn't really like that big of a price difference. Like this is like ease of install. Uh, you put it in, and you have your uh, chassis, and then you have your coach. Uh, you connect those, and then you have your ground, and this is your ignition uh, signal, like when uh, the vehicle is running. And this is just like if I hit the little button that I already installed, I could jump start to connect them manually. Uh, so I'm going to reuse, actually, I'm going to reuse uh, all of these uh, when I install this stuff. And uh, let me actually get it, like, unboxed so I can kind of show you, like, everything is pretty much already installed because i already installed that isolator where i can reuse it i just have to run like new lines just for the placement of uh the dc to dc charger i'm thinking that's gonna live like right here and i'll be able to take effect or take advantage of a, a fan that will eventually live here for exhaust fans for the cabinet uh because it will put up some heat and i do have like aluminum plate coming that i'm gonna put on the back side like the same thing i did with uh the solar charge controller just to dissipate some of the heat put this aluminum block behind it so i'm gonna do the same thing uh for the dc to dc charger but let me get this stuff uh opened up so you can actually see it oh and the box is a little janky so this helps with opening the box. So you open the box. This is the DC to DC charger, uh, 30 amps, 12 volt to 12 volt, uh, non-isolated. And this is a, 
the little remote switch we're gonna have to send our signal to to get that uh like the ignition 12 volt so you know that the vehicle is running that'll go on to that so we got that and for our isolator relay it's uh pretty much like a regular relay you have your uh power will come in power will go out either way it'll connect it doesn't matter which side you put it on and then you just put like a ground it doesn't matter which side a ground to like a switch positive uh so you put it either way it doesn't matter with this and it's just a big relay isolator it could handle up to 500 amps uh so this is double than what i had before where this could do a 225 continuous uh this is going to be a 500 amps when i need it if i need it like this won't be used at all Unless like my start batteries are dead and I need to jump the, the vehicle. That's when this will come in. But like as you can see. On the 225 I said before. Like we already ran our wires for our ground. Our ignition and our signal. Uh, so I'm going to take the ground. I'm going to connect onto one of these lugs right here. And then I'm going to do a, a signal wire. Where I press that button that's over like the dash. This will be able to activate this. So I could use this as a jump start. Connect the batteries. And then my switch also glows uh, blue, so like I know it's pressed. So like if it's like left on, like I would know. And then it will just be the same thing where you have your battery and then your coach, battery and your coach, and it'll just do the same thing. So the only thing is just getting this mounted. Like I'm gonna try to, like this was mounted upside down. Oh, all this stuff falling apart. Upside down like so. So I need to try to get this in the same place as that. And then for the, the wires for the the DC to DC charger, since I'm not mounting it down there, I'm going to run the wires like up along the wall and shoot them in there. And I'm not going to show you uh, me running those wires because like each vehicle is different depending on where you want to mount your uh, DC to DC charger. Uh, the closer you can mount it, the better because you don't have to worry about voltage drop. And I already calculated for voltage drop, it's less than like 3%, it's like 2 some percent or something like that where it should be fine. And then when I do uh, the algorithm for the charging, I'll take all that into consideration so that way it still does what it needs to do. But uh, right now I'm gonna get into uh, running the wires. I'm gonna get this mounted first and then we're gonna worry about mounting that later. Like I'm waiting for the plate to come, but it will be in the same video. We'll get that mounted up there in the corner, but I just need to run the wires. So I need a positive going from uh, the alternator, a positive going to uh, the batteries themselves, and then the ground. So that's all I need to hook up this. And then also the 12 volt signal, so that way, like when the ignition is uh, on, it knows that the, the vehicle is running, and it's, it turn it on or off if it knows that like the vehicle is running. So that's the same signal, the wire, that would be for a uh, ignition when I had that hooked up. So like that's down there. I'll just have to extend that wire to make it reach up there. And <laughs> we should be good. But uh, yeah, it's pretty, uh, I think it'll be pretty straightforward. It's just trying to get everything mounted is the, the hard part and actually running the wire. So uh, depending on your vehicle, uh, try to have it as close as possible to your batteries. Just so you have to worry about voltage drop because it is using a six gauge wire. So I got some uh, marine grade, it's tinned. A uh, wire both for our positive and negative and then just some extra lugs just so I could put everything on there And when we are doing your DC to DC charger, make sure you have it fused I'm gonna do a uh, 60 amps going in and out like this is a uh, rated for a uh, 30 But I uh, looked online for the instructions and it says to make sure you use like a 60 amp fuse So I have those which are they're resettable. I'm gonna put that on both uh, the in and the out on a DC charger in and out both need to have uh, the 60 amp fuse. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're mounting it. Make sure it's fused just to save yourself from fires and accidents and stuff like that. Just make sure it's safe. And yeah. So let me get the <laughs> wires ran and uh, we'll get this going.
All right, so we have our uh, relay installed, the Stinger relay, which I'll be able to like jump start the vehicle uh, off of the coach batteries if the start battery ever dies. I have that wired up. It was just a little tight, so I didn't really film, like record uh, like me doing the install, but like, I have the wires ran. Uh, they're going behind the wall to uh, the DC to DC charger, and then they come out down here. And then for uh, <coughs> the relay, this 500 amp relay right here, this is wired up. Uh, so this is our coach side. Uh, that's the lithium batteries. And then behind and all that uh, jumbleness is our uh, start battery uh, wire. And then I just have uh, the relay here that will connect the two. It's a jumbo relay. And then just because like of the size of this, I ha installed like a smaller relay right here just to feed the power to get this to, to actuate just to be on the safe side so it doesn't get like too hot. Uh, so I have it grounded right there. So we have a ground and then our positive ground positive and then once the power is sent to that it'll close this and it'll connect the the circuit the two uh, battery banks uh, together all right so for that and then right here i have a, a battery metering batter battery monitor where it does uh, each bank so this is the auxiliary this is our back batteries the lithium batteries and these are the the start batteries right there uh, right here this is the jump start button and as you can see we're currently at 12.5 on the vehicle start battery you press the button it combines the two banks together and then i'll be able to jump the vehicle if need be all right so that part works so right now it's time to install the dc to dc I already ran the wires. I just have to connect it and then we'll get that programmed and the DC to DC charger will just like charge the lithium batteries when the vehicle is actually running. So uh, let's get that going, get that installed and then we'll have to program that and I'll give you uh, more details on that when we get to that point. Okay, so everything is working how it should. I had shut off the truck. Uh, that shut down. But, like, this is nice to have on the app where, like, everything is in, like, one centralized location. We have our battery monitor up top. Uh, the DC to DC charger in the middle and our solar charge controller at the bottom. Uh, it's nice that you don't need to actually hook up to a computer. Uh, everything you could just uh, input, like, all the settings uh, via, like, the app using uh, Bluetooth. So that makes life a lot easier. So it is installed it's good everything functions how it should and when i had everything uh connected like it was showing like the power coming and going like where it's going if you had a color controller uh but like this does put out like some heat like even just having it on for like that little bit it's pretty warm uh to the touch uh so uh i do have a uh, aluminum plate coming uh that i'm gonna mount on the back and then eventually when i finish like doing my cabinets uh there's a fan that's gonna live right here uh so like when this is on there's a, there'll be like a temperature probe inside the cabinet where it will turn on uh when it like detects like a certain temperature range so like that would be a cool with a fan i uh, just put that there just like it's a good location like i didn't have room to uh to put it uh in the cab just like it was tight and then like this is just a better spot and then i could take advantage of the fan that would be installed so like that's cool but uh does well that's well that is a little warm <laughs> like it's cool but like it gets warm uh so uh just keep that in mind when you are installing like uh, the victron dc to dc charger i'm not too sure on like other uh chargers uh but like that was on not even 15 minutes and like it, you could still touch it but you could feel like it's getting warm it's getting hot uh, so just keep that in mind. You might want to install like some kind of like fan to circulate air around it over the fins. And like the fins are on their back. So like when I have the fan in here, it should be able to like blow like like nice cool air straight onto the fins. It gets that cooled off. Uh, but like I'm pleased with it. I'm happy everything is in the app in one spot. Makes life a little easier. Uh, the batteries will definitely be happier versus just getting a straight shot of juice from uh, the lithium isolator we had, the 225. Uh, that was just unregulated uh, juice. It just turned on like at certain intervals and turn off. Uh, but like that was just like uncontrolled chaos of current and voltage doing its own thing. So like now it's a safer charge. It's not like the, the most powerful charger, but like if you wanted to, you could add multiple uh, units of the DC DC charger. I could put like three in, uh, what is it, uh, parallel. 
and that'll give us uh, 90 amps of, of charging uh, power. That's like what the solar charge does, like when the sun is like full blast in the summertime. So uh, you could do that. It's just going to cost you more. But like for my needs, I think this should be good. Uh, this should uh, solve the issue like what I had, like the no heat issue uh, because of like low voltage. I'm going to turn the vehicle on to get some uh, juice to come through just to get like the heat stuff going. Uh, but like I'm pleased with that. And it's done. Bada boom, bada bing. It's installed. It's finished. It's complete. Uh, we have our uh, isolator relay to jump start. And then we have this to charge when the vehicle is running. So it's two separate uh, units. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So we're good. So until next Wednesday, with that being said, uh, it's, there's nothing wrong with having a backup to the backup. <laughs> Peace, TJ.